Hi everyone, I'm Hugo. And what we thought we'd start doing is we start doing we thought we'd start doing some regular sessions called SPFX design pattern sessions on these calls. And the goal here is that we're constantly innovating and improving the SharePoint framework. And we want to make sure that everyone is is familiar with some of the best practices and some of the design patterns. So sometimes we're going to cover some materials that you may already be familiar with, but we want to make sure that everybody is kind of brought to the same level. What I would love is your feedback at the end of this session. My my Twitter account is here, uh, and also my blog for some reason. Uh, so feel free to to uh, tweet at me uh, to let me know what kind of uh, sessions you'd like to see. And of course, I appreciate the the heart signs and the the applaud signs and things like that. Just so we understand, hey, are we doing the right thing? Today we're going to be talking about asynchronous rendering. It's one of my favorite topics. And here's why, right? There is a plague that's affecting millions of users every day, right? It costs organizations lots of money just due to loss of productivity. And it reduces user engagement. It makes people feel that their system is buggy and slow. And, you know, that's right. We're talking about slow web parts. And not only just slow web parts, we're also talking about slow web part pages, slow ACE, you know, ACEs, uh, slow Teams applications. And people will often blame you know, the, the system when it's really probably just a, a matter of how we're rendering the web part. So let's talk about that. So the first thing that you get when you build a kind of a web part out of the box is something called synchronous rendering, right? So the out of the box web part that you get when you, uh, when you use the, the fancy wizard, the Yeoman generator, it will create a web part that will have a render method and the render method, all you're supposed to do in the render method is you're supposed to create the HTML that you want to render, and then you're supposed to inject it into the page. Right now, you can actually put some dynamic stuff in there. Like, for example, if you want to look at some of the properties that have been set on the web part instead of uh, passing a hard coded string here, you could do that. Now, the problem is what if I'm trying to do synchronous rendering, but with data? Right, so I'm calling data and I don't have control over how long it will take. So let's take the same example here uh, and I'm just going to use the same render method. But this time I'm going to be calling some kind of fancy method out there that returns results. Maybe it's calling an API, maybe it's calling a website or something like that. But the problem is this is synchronous. So while you're doing this, the web part is going, all right, I'm going to wait for you before I can render anything. And then once it gets the results, then it'll render the HTML and you know you inject it to the page like you would normally do. Now let's look at what that does on a page. So here I have a web part. Well, this is just an out of the box web part, but if I just show you, if I refresh the page here, and I hope that yeah, uh, <laughs> give me a second. My uh, my gulp serve is actually died while we're doing this. I swear I had that ready just before the call. So I'm just uh, starting the uh, gulp serve on my browser page here so I can show the web part. Uh, but what I did while we're waiting for this to kick in uh, is I created the web part that I'll be sharing in a second uh, where I'm just I'm, I'm being obnoxiously slow, right? I'm uh, not me, but the web part. Uh, I'm actually injecting a weight that will make the web part really, really slow, and it's synchronous. So that means that the web part itself is going to wait before it returns results. We're almost there. Of course, it decided to stop uh, as I was about to present. All right, I should be ready to reload now. Okay, so if I start this again, I take the just the out of the box web part. All right, you see the the picture web part is actually pretty fast. Now, if I add my synchronous web part, one of the things that you'll notice is that, well, the first time I add it, it, it seems like, is this broken? Um, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it was because it's code that I wrote, but this is not code. This is not an issue with the code that I wrote. This is an issue with how long it's taking to retrieve the results. Um, 
And if I refresh the page, let's just do this. Now what the web part is added, um, it's actually going to do something like this, where it's like, uh, OK, the web part is stopping pretty much the whole page from rendering in time. And of course, I'm exaggerating the results here, but this is actually what it does in tiny little increments throughout your throughout your your sites, throughout your your teams. You're injecting uh, web parts that could potentially slow down your application. So how do we fix that? Well, let's go back to my fancy slides. We can actually use something called asynchronous rendering. So asynchronous rendering, the only thing that you need to do really is you need to actually go in and say, OK, so this method is asynchronous and asynchronous. If you if you're not familiar with the term, right, it means that we're not trying to keep things in sync. We're just kind of we're going to launch something and we're not going to wait for it to come back. Uh, we'll just handle uh, later when it comes back. We'll handle it uh, separately. That way everything else can continue moving forward and uh, everything seems to be more performant. So the web part needs to return a promise. In this case, it's a void promise, uh, like many people that I know. And then one, one of the things that I'm gonna do here is I'm going to render just this little spinny thing, just to show you kind of, hey, we're busy right now. Uh, we'll get our data, and that's the part that takes long, but we're, you'll notice that we make an await statement. So we're saying, this is asynchronous, wait for this to come back and then give me the results. And then just like before, we'll just render the results. Now the problem is in the documentation, um, one of the things that it says is the web part will wait an indeterminate amount of time before it renders. Now what I think that means behind the scenes, I think it's VESA is hitting F5 once in a while just to refresh your, your web part. Um, and that means that your web part may, while it's going to be faster than the first web part, it's not necessarily going to be as fast as it could be. Now there is a way that you can tell your web part or you can tell SharePoint or Teams uh, or Viva, this web part is going to render asynchronously uh, and I'm going to let you know when I'm ready. If you go look at the documentation on uh, docs.microsoft.com, You'll see that the web, the base web part class has an is render async method, and it's a property. So you just return true or false, and uh, it says, you know, when the, now there is something that you need to do though. If you do say is render async is true, SharePoint is not going to wait for um, like it's just going to continue, and it's expecting you to call a method called render completed. I think but we'll see it on the next slide. So that's why I don't need to remember it. So, okay, so the first thing that I'm doing is I'm saying is render async is true. Then I do the same thing I did before. I did the, I do the little spinny thing. I call my my uh, my method. I, in this case, I hide the little spinny thing because I was getting fancy. I render the web part. And then once I'm done, I actually tell SharePoint render is completed. And that will kind of force it to kind of realize, oh, okay, I'll you know, that means I should be faster. Now, let me take the exact same web part that we had before, uh, and it's going to be slow. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but because again, I was trying to be obnoxiously slow in terms of how to render this web part. So let's refresh the page without the web part. Let's add the same web part as before, except this time it's going to be asynchronous rendering. You'll notice that Right away, the web part starts doing stuff, but it's just not rendering data, right? And that's fine. Like we'll talk uh, in a separate session how to handle, um, you know, weights and things like that. But the great thing about this is, if I refresh the page, you'll see everything else renders really, really quickly, and then the web part um, renders. And when it gets around to getting the results, and again, I've hard coded the weight here, when it gets around to getting the results, it renders properly. Now, I'll skip you the, the wait here. Here's the thing though, and we need to talk about this because, you know, we if you look at all the awesome samples that we have out there, we, we have probably some of the top minds in, in the, the SharePoint industry or whatever you want to call it, and amazing samples out there. 
you know, of, of the thousands of samples that we have across the various repos, there's actually two samples that use the async rendering method. So it's just one of those things that uh, either people are not aware of or it's not documented uh, properly. But and the thing is, progress indicators make slow systems feel uh, less insufferable, right? So if I have a web part that does nothing and uh, I'm not telling people, hey, I'm about to render, then people will think the system is slow. SharePoint is slow, it's buggy, you know, Teams is slow. And so using progress indicators and showing the users that there's something happening has a lot of advantages. Uh, one of the things is that it reassures the users that the system is actually working and it actually reduces the user's uncertainty. It also gives the user something to look at while waiting, right? And I know that little spinny thing is annoying, but we'll talk about that uh, later. It also offers users a reason to wait uh, for the system to finish because it says, hey, I'm, I'm doing something. I'm going to be uh, giving you results soon enough. And it can actually reduce the user's perception of time. Um, and it actually, users actually devote some cognitive resources to like to the feedback itself and they pay less attention to the wait. And if you haven't attended the session that David and I do at a lot of conferences, it's, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the micro animation uh, session. We actually do demonstrate that where we show two things happening at the exact same time, the exact same duration. One has animations, one do doesn't. And every single attendee thinks, hey, this web part was actually a lot faster. It's not, it just feels that way. Now the human eye can detect or the human brain can detect uh, delays as short as one tenth of a second. So anything that takes longer than that doesn't feel instant. So the rule here is anything that's a second uh, uh, or more is enough to actually interrupt the person's conscious thought process. So what do you do? Anything that's less than 10 seconds, and 10 seconds sounds like a lot, uh, and it is a lot nowadays, but anything that 10 seconds or less should be uh, at least using a looped progress indicator. And now there's all sorts of rules about how many times you loop, uh, that will actually make people feel that the system is slow versus fast. But again, we'll talk about that in a different se in, a, in a separate session. Now, if your thing is going to take longer than 10 seconds, one of the things that you can do is like a, pro a percent done progress indicator, which may or may not be um, hard to do in a in in your situation. But you know, you want people to understand that hey, we're I'm not just hung here. I'm not just frozen. Um, I'm actually making progress. And one of the rules that I would say is please don't ever put a button that says, you know, our message that says, don't push this button again. We got you covered. That's probably the worst thing to do. Um, so one of the things that uh, we'll talk about here is, and I know I'm running out of time, but the, uh, the Fluent UI user interface has something called the Shimmer interface. We're not going to cover it today, but investigate this because the Shimmer interface allows you to actually render a temporary user interface that, that makes the user think, okay, this is almost there. It's almost, the data is almost loaded. Um, it's, you know, and in a lot of cases, users don't even notice that you actually are rendering a Shimmer. Uh, so it makes the system feel faster, even though it's not necessarily faster. All right. Let me wrap this up. We have a couple uh, samples out there. If you want to see good examples of how to use the render async, uh, you have the uh, Microsoft Graph uh, people search web part, and we have the HTM, not HTML, HTM templating web part out there in the SPFX web part repository that shows these concepts. Again, I'm looking for feedback, so please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Bernie H. Uh, I'll monitor the chat, but that's it for me. Back to you, Patrick. All right. Thank you so much for that wonderful demo. Performance uh, is a very important thing in every application. So step one is uh, improving that performance, and step two is providing a good experience uh, when loads are a little bit longer. So fantastic uh, summary there and some great patterns uh, for folks to follow in their solutions. Mm -hmm.